we've done some work on little LED bar graphs that display simply a level uh, on the voltage of each battery, not each cell. And we do, at the current time, have wiring in the car to bring those voltages to some terminal strips here at the front of the car. So I can take this multimeter and go from one terminal to the next, and that reads not an individual cell volt, but a reading of the entire battery. And this goes from right to left. Um, between these two would be my first battery on the negative side, and then the second, the, th the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. If I read across the entire range, I'll read my 120 volts. But that's not what I'm interested in. I'm going to compare battery number 9, which is 13.41 volts, with battery 8, which is 13.40, with battery 7, which is 13.40, which battery 6, which is 13.43, with battery 5, 13.42, 4 is 13.43, 3 is 13.41, and so we can see that at rest right now, these batteries have a variation across four cells of three one hundredths of a volt. Uh, that's pretty close. Now, if I went a tenth of a volt off on one cell, it's going to show up on the battery. Uh, certainly, if I had a six cell and it was two tenths off, it will likewise show up on the individual battery. So again, my first line of defense is does half my voltage, um, 60 volts, equal the other half, 60 volts, to within three or four tenths of a volt? And if they do, I don't have a problem with any individual cell. Uh, the idea of having uh, one, two cells low on the two halves identically uh, in an identical amount is preposterous. It's not going to happen. So that's my first indication I have a problem. When I have a suspicion or just want to check, I go in and with a multimeter uh, check each of the batteries, not each of the individual cells. Um, to determine uh, if there's a particular battery that's a problem. If there is, frankly, I'm done. Uh, I'm going to pull the battery. I might take a reading right at the terminals of the battery and check each of the cells, but more than likely, if it was anything significant, I pull the battery out of the car and we go back in the shop and, uh, and start working with a little better test equipment. And uh, th at that point, we would uh, uh, perhaps try to bring the cell back uh, in line by either bleeding off some energy or adding additional charge to that cell to get it back in tune with the other three. And if that's not working out very well, and I've got some test equipment, we can actually run the batteries all the way down, charge them back up, and see how they perform at, at various levels. Um, but uh, it, it, at that point, if I can't get it back in line, we replace the cell, try to get that married back into the battery, and then put the battery back in the car. My advice, if you're buying a battery pack for your um, automobile initially, is to get at least uh, probably three batteries worth uh, or 12 cells uh, extra out of the same manufactured lot. So you have spares that at least at the time they were built were reasonably similar in chemistry and nature. Uh, the way this is going, uh, we're already um, uh, not a year into this, and I've already got an order in for another set of batteries for another car, and they're a different chemistry. I can't use them in this car with these cells. So fortunately, we had bought plenty of extra batteries um, when we did this. If you're three years down the road, you're going to have one cell go bad and you're going to have to replace your whole pack because you can't get a cell of that chemistry anymore because they're obsolete. 
and you're going to see these things, uh, you know, go this way quite a bit. What well, if it's just a cell that's out of line or a failed cell? Uh, the rest of the pack can be if you can catch it before it tears up the rest of the pack. Uh, you simply replace the cell, do a little bit of manual tuning with a resistive load and a charger um, to get it in line with the other ones, and you're on back back down the road. So, having spares of uh, the same type of battery, and ideally from the same manufactured batch, is uh, is kind of a big deal. So this is the approach we've taken to battery management. It is a top level indication ready access to the, the voltages of the batteries at the battery level and uh, then the ability to pull a battery and individually test cells and, uh, uh, and replace them. So that's our take on, on battery management systems, um, active balancers uh, can be made that are too expensive to put in a car or too dangerous to have in a car. Um, battery monitoring systems that are based on digital systems, microcontrollers, um, microprocessors, uh, simply exist in a world of low-level signals that are, are noise sensitive in an environment that creates a tremendous amount of noise. And they provide too much information. Um, my daughter, my wife, is not going to know there's a problem by seeing all those numbers on the screen. Uh, and with a very brief explanation, I can show them, hey, here's where this dot should be. If it moves off of here more than three or four bars, bring the car home when they look at it. Everybody understands that. And so in battery um, management or battery monitoring, um, simpler is better. Certainly when you're operating the car, you don't want to be operating a Linux computer trying to do Ubuntu with a left-hand turn, and, uh, uh, and they don't work very well, and they're kind of expensive anyway. Um, so you don't really need to go to that expense. Um, my advice is to uh, get a very capable programmable charger, um, a good instrumentation system that's easy to read and, and that you can tell what it's telling you at a glance, not at a study. You're driving the car. Sure, I'd like to have a bar graph display or a built-in digital multimeter, maybe a digital readout across the front of the car so that people that see me coming down the road will know what, what my battery uh, uh, voltage is. That, that, you know, I mean, that's all on the table. Um, but a computerized battery monitoring system, $2,500 for a battery management, management system and wires to each individual cell are completely off the table, and I don't think you need them. Now, the engineers that design these batteries and warranty them will assure you that's not the case. You have to have a battery management system and you have to know to a thousandth of a volt what each cell is doing instantaneously in time. Um, they're, they're covering their design uh, posterior. Um, you simply don't need it. You do need a good indication that you will be likely to catch early that there's something wrong. And then you need a way to drill down to what's wrong. Uh, the way we do it is to the battery level and then to the cell level. Um, and once you've got there and do have a problem, you need to have some, um, some spares on hand um, that you can make repairs without having to replace the whole pack. So that's uh, the take on battery management. And I thought this would be a good time to talk about that when we're adding two batteries.